There are very few conventions like GaryCon. You know, honestly, I don't really think there is one like it. Yeah, exactly. So today, we're going to be talking about our awesome three-day experience at GaryCon 2019. Welcome to the Homebrew Crew. I'm Tony. This is Sean. And today we're going to be talking about our experience at GaryCon, which was, uh, I don't know how to explain that. It's like uplifting and fun, but yeah, it, homey. It was, <laughs> it was really unlike anything that I've ever been to, you know, previously. And I've been to different conventions, you know, here in the Midwest, you know, and there it's really not like your typical convention. Yeah. I mean, you know, that whole like stand in line thing to get autographs that you do at every single con that's known to man. Not GaryCon. No. That's not how it was. It was more like a, uh, a party, a gathering of people who love yeah. D&D. Yeah, and, and essentially it had all started after uh, Gary, um, Gary Gygax himself actually passed away. Uh, so shortly his family actually got together and they got this convention started. And it's really not even just about D&D. There are so many other games that you can play there and experience there. Uh, there's like Pathfinder. Um, there's all these different war games you can play. Even a couple of board games that you can try out. Card games. And there's all these different things that you can experience. But generally the idea is that it is kind of built for Dungeons and Dragons. So. Yeah, and uh, if you are going next year, be sure to sign up online for which games you want to play, yeah. or else you'll be subject to the the toils that we had to go through. Exactly. Where you're going from table to table. Hey, do you have a spot? Do you have a spot? <laughs> and actually, we're going to go right into our experience. So day one, and, and I will preface that, you know, we were... I, I, to be fair, we were a little ill-prepared, if, I, if I'll oh, say yeah. correctly. No, we had no idea what we were going to. We, um, we thought it was like any other con that yeah, we went to. Like, yeah, exactly. okay, yeah, we'll go, we'll see the vendors, we'll do this. No, nothing could could, 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 uh, could prepare us. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I'm still at a loss for I know. so much fun. Because you, you, you go there, and basically, the way that it's designed is that you're supposed to kind of register for everything beforehand. Mm -hmm. So... Th that first day, everything was booked. Mm -hmm. um, we got to see some of the vendors, though, um, which were really cool. Some people are selling some fantastic, you know, stuff. There are there's artwork. There's stuff that you can use for your campaign, like dice towers or um, like miniatures. Your, uh, your initiative. Yeah, tracker I, thing. I bought an initiative tracker. I bought a chest for my dice. There's all these things that you can just blow your money on. That's just <laughs> all tabletop D and D related. But and the the vendors are fantastic. We met a lot of great people. As well. Oh God, we saw people who crafted gaming tables. Mm -hmm. People who made their own dice, people that made uh, resin masks right. and things and, on your characters. And we actually met uh, the the people that run the company Roll for Initiative, a company yep. that you actually bought products from. And you know, I remember you had an issue with something, and they, yeah. they treated you very nicely. And we met them. Not only yeah. that, they remembered. Yeah, like, they remember oh, yeah, that. No, I, we remember getting that. And yeah. we sent it back. It it was. I think the thing that was most amazing about Gary Con with it, and you know, we okay, the vendors were cool. Of course, they wanted to sell us stuff, but at the same time. Everybody was there for the same reason. Everybody was there because they, they loved Gary, basically. Yeah, yeah. And I, I hate to say that. It's not just D&D. It was like, because if you look at what Gary sparked and when he started, it became this huge thing. Exactly. It, 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 it kind of it just adopted this this culture, really, of, of all these people. And, and, you know, everyone's here for the whole weekend. They come together. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just so cool to be with the same all these people with the same mindset and, and yeah. the same attitude about everything. Um, I, day one was kind of short just because, uh, you know, it was very bewildering. There's a lot of people, and we weren't really registered for anything. Uh, we got to play Lords of Waterdeep, though, the, which is a great board game. Cool. I've never played it before. Uh, we might even, I like... I still want to buy that. Yeah, we, we might should. even, like, play it on a stream or something. It was that super fun. That would actually fun. be kind of cool. Yeah, we, we'll we actually, play a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Cassie, she showed us how to play that game. Yeah, so... Uh, she's like, oh, no, this is great. Watch. And I'm like, uh, okay. And then we yeah. just started playing. Which exactly. Great. Um, and that one we played for, for several hours down yes, there. Yes, it, um, it was a lot of fun. Um, we saw our friend Michael again. Yeah, on day one, we actually ran into Michael Whitworth. We were at the, the artist panel, and he was just there <laughs> was, getting his book signed. <laughs> which was weird, because we're, yeah. I'm sitting there going, I told Sean, let's bring our book and we'll get it signed, because we have another Art and Arcana book, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's get it signed, or what have you. And he's like, oh, I forgot at home, it's not a big deal. I have my handbook and all that. Cool. And then when we get there, I'm like, hey, look, there's some guy getting Art and Arcana signed. And we look, and it's Michael Whitmore yeah. and his book signed yeah, by exactly. the original D&D &D artist. And yep. I'm like, okay. Uh, uh, Larry Elmore was there. We, I mean, we talked to him on day two. Yeah. He was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, day one was, again, bewildering, kind of interesting, kind yeah. of fun. Day, day two, de uh, things definitely picked up. That was probably the best day. Um, nine o'clock in the morning, we actually tried Starfinder for the first time. Which was weird, because late at night, that night before, we're like, you know what? There's a Starfinder thing tomorrow. 
let's see if we understand it. And I was falling asleep trying to create a character going, I don't understand these we were, rules. Yeah. I don't, I we, don't get we it. We were also nervous about jumping into a game that we never played before. Mm-hmm. Um, but thankfully, and I think this is kind of across the board with all the people running the games at Gary Con, they're all really wonderful people. Everyone there that's running a game, whether it's D&D or Starfinder, whatever game it is, they're so passionate about the game they mm-hmm. want it, the, the, that you want to play. The We played with uh, Paul, uh, and if you watch this, Paul, thank you again. Um, he had no problem with this playing. He taught us how to play, gave us pre-made characters, and we just jumped right in into a, a sci-fi adventure. It was great i got to be a vesk she was meaty yeah to say the not least. much of a backstory <laughs> but she was cool um but it, it was neat it, like i i think you're right with that with paul paul was a was an awesome dm with it yeah uh, i think and then it's a gm though I don't right at that point DM, it is a gm yeah this is this is true it's not really much of a dungeon so. at the same time it was every single person we played with was exactly like that oh well you guys never played before no big deal here i've got characters for you here's this here's minis i'm like wow you're prepared, which yeah, is great. Yeah, exactly. Um, but we had a lot of fun with Starfinder. In fact, uh, we may be we may be cheating on D and D. I know. Bit. Don't tell anyone though. Yeah, just, um, but don't worry, we're not jumping ship just yet. So all, all six hundred uh, people that right, watch our channel are now slept. Yeah. Um, uh, there was another great moment where um, Larry Elmore was given a special award, mm-hmm. um, and we were actually there during that part. You and they had a they had a picture taking of the people in the Hawaiian shirts, and that was kind of a you know one of Gary Gags like the, the Hawaiian shirt. And that Saturday was I was wearing a Hawaiian shirt that day. Yeah, it, uh. it, was, it was great. It was it, again just one of those like special moments where everyone you know got together and, and they were celebrating this culture that's been adopted from from all of that that Gary started. We we can put up that picture, right? We yeah, yeah, picture. definitely. We have, have some, we have some footage Larry of Elmore, which was yeah. cool. Um, in fact, Luke was there before. Right. Like, it was so funny because Luke <laughs> Gygax was was right behind us, and we were all going to take this picture. And then as we, Sean and I got up there to take it with Larry and Luke, Luke all of a sudden he just went off and took a phone call. Yeah. Somewhere. And we're like, oh, okay. Well, no big deal. All right. Yeah. Larry's but, cool. but we still got to take a picture with with uh, Larry, and it, it was wonderful. It was, it was great to meet him. Yeah. So. It was really really great. Um, oh, day two was was a lot of fun for me though. I mean, yeah. When we sat down, so we, we played Starfinder in the morning. And we f- we got into Cassie was really good at this. She found a uh, a D and D game that was being played called The Least Among Us, and that it had like nobody signed up. Yeah, for it. It, it was registered last minute. Yeah, like it almost didn't go off either. It wasn't even on the actual schedule in the in the actual pamphlet book. Right. So it was almost like a hidden game almost. So she went up and she's like, "Yeah, hey, is this actually happening?" And she found the not only the DM but the author of that act- uh, of that one, and we we got a slot in, sat yeah. down with the author of this game. And uh, f- from what went after that, I mean, we had people coming up to the tables and things. Yeah, and then so one particular person. <laughs> <laughs> so our, our, our DM, you know, he works for Wizards of the Coast, you know, very affluent figure, and people know him. Yeah. Um, there was at one point where uh, one, one person came up to him, and, you know, he was kind of talking to him and kind of making fun. And you got to understand, Sean's on one side of the table, I'm across right, from Right, so he, uh, Tony could and, clearly see And the see DM me. was to my right over here, and I, I saw who this was, I'm like, oh. And, and I was looking at this person, I was like, I, no, there's no way. And then I kind of looked closer, and I was like, oh my god. The, the changes, the changes on your face it, it, went it, from... It was like, it was like a like a graph, like a like a from and like scene. just from bottom of nothing to oh my god. Matt Mercer crashed our table, <laughs> and it was so and, cool. and just came up and I don't know he wasn't even a registered guest. Right, he just showed up for like you know to do the stream and all that, but he wasn't like on the guest list. And he, he was so cool. He was right there. He he told the DM give him hell, and yeah, then like, he's he like, ran away. <laughs> he asked the DM. He goes, well, what are you running? Oh, the least among us. Oh. Give him hell. <laughs> I'm like, uh, okay. It was, I, I was personally starstruck. <laughs> but the funniest thing was, is at that point, it got around, because we're still in turn order. And yeah, yeah. It gets to Sean. Big the, table. There's seven of us playing yeah. with the with the DM. Yeah. The DM gets to Sean and goes, Sean, you okay, buddy? <laughs> like, <laughs> Sean's sitting there like, <laughs> I, I, I was I happen. was starstruck. It was it was crazy. Um, it, That was probably one of the best moments of the night. Um, to, but I will you know, say with it... it Every single star that we saw there, I mean, I, I talked to Todd Kendrick, I mm-hmm. talked to, you know, every single person that we saw there was not there to be a star, which right. was the cool thing. Satine Phoenix was there. Mm-hmm. She's awesome in person. Everyone we talked to was like just this this amazing just person. And Cassie the entire time had been saying things like, well, they're people. Like, <laughs> yeah, but do you know how cool of people they are? They, it, it, they're better people than we are. And really, honestly, when you're there, you don't feel that. 
No, I, and I think the way that the convention and, and the location is set up, it's such an intimate setting where, mm-hmm. you know, you can run into, you know, someone who's really big in the D&D world at the bar in the hotel, you know, and they just treat it like nothing. And, yeah. you know, of course, you know, people kind of like hold, you know, celebrities and famous people higher up, but it is just kind of crazy to see them in such an environment where you can just walk into them or, or say hi or just have a chat, really. You yeah, know? and I think, I think really honestly, because it felt so close with people, it made me think a lot about our channel and it made me think a lot about what we're doing and how we've grown in the past couple of months and all those things. And I feel like you feel like you're part of something. Yeah. And it was, it's, I know it sounds crazy, but it's, it's kind of important. You, you realize like when I was talking, uh, <laughs> when I was talking to Bill, I could say Bill, right? Yeah, so yeah. When I was talking to Bill, um, he told me there's, there's 26 or 27 people that work in Dungeons and Dragons in Wizards of the Coast. That's it. He said, there's not like all these people. Right. He says, it's, it's 26 of us that are working there. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, it was just, it just felt like this is a smaller group than it was, or I thought it was a smaller group. And there's so many people nowadays that are getting involved with D&D that you forget how, how close everyone is. Pretty much everybody there is on a first name basis with anyone that's there. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. Like yeah. you talk to people, we played with people the, I mean, the first, the second day we played, uh, remember Saloon? Yeah, we played with the with a gentleman, um, and I'm so sorry because I, I did not get. I we know we, we his got character, character name. names. So <laughs> Saloon, um, and he made this this dwarf who like committed to not drinking, and it was such a crazy build. It was a level in warlock, a level in cleric, and a level in, in something else <laughs> at level three. But he'd been playing D and D literally twice my life. Yeah, and he he, he was like you know this great guy, and I couldn't believe it because I was watching him, and we were okay. So at least among us, you're going to rescue a, a child. Right? Right. And you're thinking about it and you go, well, out of 40 something years worth of playing D&D, don't you think you would have gotten tired of rescuing a child? You you, you think he had so much zeal in him, you know? Yeah, he had so much more energy than some people that were half his age. Yeah, it was impressive. It, It just goes to show you that, you know, the people that play this game and that truly love it, they come here to just to do just that. Yeah. You know, there's such a passion for the people that, you know, attend the con. And it, I, like I said, unlike any other convention I've ever been to, I've never felt so comfortable around the people that I was walking around with. Yeah. I mean, you know that feeling when you first start D&D and you don't want to tell people that you're playing D&D? Yeah. Because you think they're going to go, oh, D&D, that kind of thing? Yeah. Not a single not a single feeling of that. Anybody that you had there was there to have a good time and there to have fun. There wasn't anyone spoiling it or making fun of it or anything like that. It was so much fun and felt so close. I mean, we had old people, young people. We we played our last game on on uh, was it Sunday? Yeah, on day on our day three. So we we were in a game and it was kind of like a last minute grouping again. Another game that kind yeah. of took last minute players. It was me, you, and Cassie, and we actually played uh, with uh, a gentleman and his son. His son was like eleven years old, and we asked him how long he's been playing. And it was like, oh, you know, this is my this is my like sixth Gary Con. Yeah, I'm if like, you did the math, I think he's, since five? he's been playing this game for half his life. Yeah, and it was just so cool because I mean, this kid is like, oh, he so was much spot on him. too. He knew he everything, played, role played everything. It was just it was playing along with like cute. you know, our it was like it was like this this whole thing of like feeling, you know, you saw the generations of people, you know, yeah, you saw like all these people, and it, strangely enough, our subscriber count changed age wise. When we were there, <laughs> we, yeah. we we got more of the thirty-five to fifty range. Yeah, all of a sudden. yeah, definitely it was for sure. Cool. Anyway, I I just thought it was a very heartwarming experience. I'm glad we went. We're definitely going back next year. We've already got that going. Yeah, um, I mean, it's funny. Before we even made this video, we almost wanted to keep it a secret. Um, I think it's such a special and different kind of convention. Um, and even though it's a little more tight knit, uh, we do encourage anyone who is even passionate about D and D tabletop gaming or anything like that to show up next year because it's going to be like unlike anything you've ever been to absolutely and next year bring your frog suit yes you will <laughs> we, be grung the last thing we we skipped down on the um the we are grung uh thing this year uh because we couldn't get in it yeah was, it, it was, it was the most the popular wall. event of the night but just imagine a large gala ballroom of people <laughs> half of them dressed in frog suits Screaming, thunderous, making the hotel shake. We, we are drunk. <laughs> Unlike fun. anything you've ever been to. So if you had the chance and if you got the time, it's in Lake Geneva, mm-hmm. usually around March. 
go do it. It's it's going to be like anything you've ever been to. Yep. And uh, with that, I think that's going to come to the close of our video. So remember, the best campaigns are always the ones that are home brewed. So until next time, keep, keep brewing. brewing.